Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk through activity 9-5, titled Installing the Web Enrollment Role Service. This is from the MCSE slash MCSA Guide to Configuring Advanced Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2 Services in preparation of exam 70-412. In my edition of the book, this activity begins on page 353. So a quick background, um, we have our domain controller set up um, on server 1. We have a second server, which is our um, certificate authority. And then I have just a client machine on the domain. Um, so server 2 is also a domain member. So we have the role for the certification authority installed and set up on the server. Um, so as one of the previous activities, we made sure that it could issue certificates. Um, and we tested that. It served a certificate both to my domain controller, the machine itself, and then to a test user as well. So in this activity, we want to do it so that we can issue certificates through web enrollment instead of doing it through auto enrollment, which is how we have it set up right now. So we should still have an option here. If you're following along the book, um, we installed the role, but we haven't configured it really, so that's what we want to do next. So we'll use the current credentials, which is fine, and we want to configure the web enrollment CA. Go ahead and configure it. <coughs> Once that's done, we'll close this. It'll probably prompt us to configure the last one that we have set up. Um, we're not ready to configure that yet, so we're going to say no. Um, so, in order to provide certificates, IIS must have a web server certificate itself. So, we need to request one for it. So, we're going to go to Tools. Internet Information Services, IIS. Once that comes up, we'll select Server 2, which is the server that's acting as the CA. So we just left click on the server over here on the left. Um, if you receive this prompt, just go ahead and hit no. Um, in a real life environment, you might want to go that route and explore it um, for just testing purposes. We're going to skip it for now. So in our center console, let me go ahead and make this larger so we can see everything. We want to select the server certificates right here, so we'll double click that. And then we want to create a domain certificate here on the right in the actions pane. Alright, so we're going to run through all of this. Um, if you're following along in the book, we're going to use the server fully qualified domain name. So in this case, it's 412server2.412 dom1.local. Um, if you're in a live environment, you'll want to use the fully qualified domain name of your server. Um, so you have server name first, and then your full domain where it resides. Organization, um, again, if you're in a live environment, you'll want to actually put an organization here. Um, for testing purposes, we're just going to call it server. Organizational unit, I'm just going to drop my name in here. Out.
button. We're going to select our CA. And then in the friendly name box, we're going to go ahead and give it the fully qualified. And then once this finishes, we're going to come over and look into our So once that completes, it'll automatically close itself. We can see it listed here. Lights node. Once that expands, we want to expand the default website. So we'll right click on the default website here. And edit bind bindings. We want to go ahead and add a new bind. In the type, we want to select HTTPS. And then the SSL certificate, we want to select this drop down and point, we're going to go ahead and point it to the friendly name that we gave, the fully qualified domain name of the CA server. Go ahead and hit OK. And we should see it listed on port 443, which is HTTPS, which is good. So we'll go ahead and close that. And then we have the cert serve here. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then in the middle pane, we're going to double click the SSL settings to open that up. We want to go ahead and tell it to require SSL. Um, note that under the options here, um, we can have the web server ignore, accept, or require client certificates. If you want client computers connecting to the web server to verify their identity, you would select require. Um, for testing purposes, I'm going to leave it on ignore because it doesn't really matter in a test environment right now. So I'm going to hit apply. And then we want to go ahead and test our configuration. So we're going to be on our Windows 8 machine, logged in as a domain user. And we're just going to go ahead and open Internet Explorer. going to give the URL, it's going to be that HTTPS, and then we're going to direct it to the friendly name for 412 server 2, which is the fully qualified domain name. And then we want to put forward slash that cert S S R V. Let me get my mouse out of the way there. Like that. I'm going to go ahead and browse there. Um, once it connects, it should prompt for your credentials. So we're going to go ahead and use our test user. All right, and so it'll give us some quick information that we can request a certificate for our web browser, email, other programs. Um, that way we can verify our identity to people we communicate over the web, etc.
And so we're going to go ahead and hit the link to request a right there. <coughs> so we want to select a user certificate. run that control, sign in again, I'm going to go ahead and tell it yes to allow it to perform the digital certification certificate operation, and then we'll see that when no further identifying information is required. Um, if you're using a non-administrator user, you may not be able to get this far. Um, using Active Directory, I would recommend setting this user as a member of the administrator's group first before signing in on this machine. Um, that way you can get all the way through all of this. So we're going to go ahead and hit Submit. We're going to tell it Yes again. And then we're going to tell it to install this certificate. Um, it may automatically install. If it doesn't, it'll prompt you to save it first. If it does prompt you to save, go ahead and save it to like your downloads folder. Um, and then you can view it from there. Um, looks like that covers everything from the activity. Um, I understand that was kind of fast. And... A little bit jumpy. Um, but, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them for me below. I will try to reply in a timely fashion. Thank you so much for watching.